Liverpool for you. Oh, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Football, by the hell. But they never give in. And that's the winner. Welcome to the American Red Devils podcast. I'm John. I'm Alex. And we're bringing you the best Manchester United news from this side of the pond. Let's start off by saying this. Do not blame that game on the defense, okay? I don't care who you play, whether it's a high school team, a junior college team, a college team, much less an NFL team. When you turn the ball over five times, Four interceptions, one for a touchdown, three others in field position to set up touchdowns. You ain't going to beat anybody I just talked about. Anybody. All right? And that was a disgraceful performance, in my opinion. We threw that game. We gave it away by doing that. We gave them the friggin' game. In my opinion, that sucked. Uh, You know? You can't turn the ball over five times like that. Holy crap. I don't know who the hell we think we are when we do something like that. Unbelievable. Five turnovers. One of them for... We've we've thrown four interceptions for touchdowns this year. That might be an NFL record. That's pitiful. I mean, it's absolutely pitiful to to perform like that. Pitiful. What's that? Woo, sir. How we doing? How we doing? Playoffs. We can keep going. Playoffs. Jesus. You're running out, we're running out of NFL coaches that are just having a meltdown for this club. I'll tell you what, he speaks for us in a certain way, but you could definitely play him, blame this defense um, today. Crisis mode, Manchester United. We've seen this movie before. Here we are two years later, almost to the day. I think it was like October 23rd, 2021. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, 5 0 drubbing at Old Trafford. I was there. Our first seats in the season, uh, uh, our first seats in our season tickets in the Stratford End, and here we are again, bro. Club in crisis, club in free fall. Manager is grasping at straws. The players couldn't give a shit, can't make anything work. Don't look like they care. Throwing him under the bus again, and he's going to get blamed. He's going to get fired. But this club, we're in a bad way. We're in a bad way, and it's a fucking mess. It's a fucking mess. And firing your manager is not going to fix it. I wouldn't even let him on the bus after the match. I oh. get a taxi back to Manchester. <laughs> uh, look, well said, sir. It's a tough day uh, for all Manchester United fans. Newcastle B team coming into Old Trafford. Looking easy. 3-0 at home. We got to get used to these. I mean, really, it's it's gotten to the point this season where, A, we don't expect the team to show up. B, we expect to get beat. And not even have a sniff at net. I mean, this is just brutal. I bet Newcastle to win plus 200. Free money. You got to take it. You know we're showing up. It's the walking dead. Halloween was yesterday. Trick or treating. Hope everyone had a great Halloween, by the way. (laughs) I've been eating all my kids candy. I got like a stomach ache. Uh, But regardless, this is the walking dead. United are walking dead. Um, There's no if, ands, or buts about it. We can talk about how did we get here. We had a Good season last season, EFL Cup champs. I feel like this, the footballing gods, it's perfect. It's perfect. We beat Newcastle in the final. Uh, I think Eric Ten Hag had a 70% win rate going into that final. After that cup, it's dropped to 55% and sliding. And it's fitting that Newcastle put us to the sword to kick us out of it after that was the peak of the mountain uh, with Eric Ten Hag, and it looks to be the slide. We are sliding, and is there anything we could do to turn it around? We got Fulham at the weekend, away at Craven Cottage. I didn't think we'd beat Newcastle in this spot. I I believe we'll beat Fulham. If we don't show up against Fulham and get beat, that's a whole nother uh, low that we're hitting, and you know what? People are going to be talking about it, sir. Heads may roll. Hey, it's May Roll. I'm going to keep you honest. He had a 70% win rate going into that game. He's had a 55% win rate since that game. His win rate is still 62% as Manchester United manager. That's what I said. Eh. I said 70% into the EFL final. He said 55%. now it's 55%. Now it's 55% after that. Yes. Yes, since. But I'm just yeah. saying, overall, it's still over 62%. And fall. It doesn't look like fast. it. Yeah, it's falling fast. Hey, bro, I'm not going to defend what I saw today, but I'm just trying to provide accurate information to the fans here and i tell you what you look at this game you look at the way this team's been performing over the last 15 games you would thought you would think his win rates in the 30s um because the team just looks the same it looked a couple years ago right the players like 
you know, hard-nosed manager comes in. They give him total autonomy over the squad. They let him bring in these players, some of which should have been sanctioned in the first place, right? $85 million for, for Anthony, $70 million for an old Casemiro, overpaying for our striker. We're grasping at straws. We're a club that is not run like any other elite sports franchise in the world. You don't just let one guy run the show, and here you are doing it again with another manager who should have been focused on just managing. Instead, we made him DOF, head scout, all of the above, and he's going to fail. He's going to fail. He's failing in real time. The players are giving up on him, but the players are bluffers. He's not the only one to blame. There is so much blame to go around that, like, speaking of giving out candy, bro, I can give out blame sticks all day. Ten Hog. The players, the front office, the Glazers, the fans. We got, dude, we can't be so reactionary. It's like, give them the end of the season. See what happens. There's no one good available, bro. There's not a single good manager available. Conte, you want that? I mean, I think you're right on the blame sticks. Everyone deserves blame. I mean, there's no if ands, or buts about it. Everyone deserves blame. The Glazers, horrible owners. Look what they've done to this uh, great historic club. The front office for enabling the manager's poor uh, spending. But at the end of the day, if you get hired to do a job and you're given responsibilities and you don't perform, it's on you. I mean, he came in and they said, hey, who do you want? He told them they went out and spent $400 million. That $400 million, that's like a lot of money. And the results that we see on the pitch are embarrassing. It's Even the injuries aside, it's atrocious 60 million for Mason Mount. He better look good because why would you pay that money for him? And it it just looks a mess. Everything's a mess. The, the Anthony signing, look, he's going to be taken to task for that. Sir, if you're hired to do a job, you spend 400 million and if you liquidated that now, how much would you get? You get 100. You lose 300 million in a year. It's yeah, like this you're is fired. not new. This is not new, bro. We paid 80 million for McGuire. What's he worth? We paid 72 million for Jaden Sancho. What's he worth? It's yeah, like, and he always fired for yeah, it. And he was and fired always for, fired for it. And that was the wrong yeah. decision to give him autonomy and, and be again. like, who yes. are you going to hire? And actually, he wanted signings that we couldn't get. So did Eric Ten Hogg. He wanted Frankie De Young. We ended up with 31 year old Casemiro. That's what they always but say. But that's yeah. the truth. Because who the fuck would want to join Manchester United today? Nobody, unless you're overpaying for them. This club is elite. It is one of the great sporting institutions of the world. I love this club like family. But at the end of the day, bro, if you were a top athlete in football, unless you were like a fucking crazy United fan, you'd be like, why would I join Manchester United? For the same reason that Van Gaal told Eric Ten Hag, do not join Manchester United. They are a commercial entity, not a sporting project. I'm just saying, Jude Bellingham, I mean, Erling Holland, they wouldn't join us. You could judge them on the $400 million spent. Absolutely horrid, right? So he didn't do a good job buying players. And then you say, okay, how's the man management going? Right? How's the man management? What's the So like, if you, if you buy players and they don't turn out all right, but then you got everyone running for you and the team's showing up and you're putting in shifts and the results just aren't going your way, it's a whole other story. So the management and the DOF together, it's just like, show me the show me the positivity. Show me what about it. If we continue down this road, is going to work. And and absolutely, the players deserve a ton of the blame. They're bluffing the manager out of a job. I mean, yeah. when I say, "Hey, how's Look the man management going?" Clearly, it's not going well. You know, you got a you got a harsh Dutch guy in in uh, making them run. They don't like it. And uh, when it goes bad, it goes really bad. If a coach is a hard nose, and the results aren't back in it, players there's nowhere to hide at Manchester United. And again, the players are trying to throw the manager under the bus. And, and we all know how this goes. We all know where this team is going, and we've seen it before so many times. The solution is get the Glazers out, and the Glazers are going to point the finger at Ten Hag. Arnold's going to point the finger at Ten Hag, and Ratcliffe coming in is going to definitely get rid of the manager. I mean, like we just know where this is headed, and it's really unfortunate it went this way. I would have loved for things to turn out differently for, the, for Eric Ten Hag, but it seems that... United is too much of a shit show for him and probably too much shit shit show for any manager that comes in ultimately. Yeah, there's I mean, there's we said it before, man. There's no one that could be successful at this job. Because sure, he's a hard nosed manager. Rangnick was a hard nosed manager, but Ole was the biggest fucking softy you'll ever find. And they rolled over on him just like these hard nosed managers. So at the end of the day, he is culpable. He has gotten transfers wrong. We've overpaid by fucking multiples of two X. But we've talked about this. If you're lucky, you get half the transfers right. Well, Martinez was a fucking bang on transfer. Um, Hoyland, we overpaid, but he's a talented lad. He'll get there. There's some other like, you know, we Anthony looks a f 
proper bust. It's a stretch to yep. say 50, per, but you have to say 50% of the value, you, you know. But the value, he doesn't decide how much money we it's spend on a player. It's too much in the weeds. It's like his but transfers is just, have not gone well, and they're not making us look like a better team. And that, That's just all it is. But it's he shouldn't be deal. Deal. It's not up, like bro. saying Hoy. He should, he should, but how about Ole signings? How about uh, Jose signings? How about yeah, they got uh, Van Gaal signings? They've they got all got been trash. They've basically all been terrible. Yes, they've all. So, the yes, the board has enabled. The, the board has enabled managers to spend poorly, and setting them up to sacking fail. themselves. Yes, yes exactly. that's what's happened. And Ted Hogg came in and saw what all three of those guys did, and the board came in and saw what happened before, and they didn't say, "Hey, let's take some more time. Let's not blow four hundred million to put more pressure on the project. We could have done it over time, spent less money, incremental progress." Yep. But I don't think Ten Hag was it. If you really break it down. He wasn't saying hold the horses on who we got to buy. He was saying spend more, that's need not more. His job, bro. Come but on, that's also honest. part of it. No, it's not. Coming into the job, I would. I saw what, what manager would be like. Don't give me money to buy. I fucking saw transfers. what Come was on. going on. Like if you are, you're kidding yourself if you didn't see when he came in that there was like another big spending hunger side of things that was going on again, and it made me nervous. It was like buying Martinez. Then it was like buying Anthony. I kind of got nervous with these big money deals because it's what we did in the past. Sanchez, the same thing. Every new manager, we get hyped up on spending, and then it all blows up in our face. And that was part of it. Now, the why whole is that? spending is part of it. Because they have changed nothing in 11 years. They exactly. keep doing the same thing over and over again and leaving the manager out to j- fucking die. And that's what's going to happen to this manager. He's going to get the hook. Yeah, but he's going to get the hook because we're not I know, playing but, well. And we're not and we're not defending well. And it's and it's just like, and the players aren't playing but for But the him. manager ain't going to fix nothing, bro. Like, who, like, let's have a, let's take a step back. You fire the manager. Why do you fire him today? Why don't you just fire him at the end of the season? The players are already walking around. Do you think they're going to have some fucking bounce if we bring in Darren Fletcher or Conte or Graham Potter? Like, the list is short of qualified people that you want in the seat today. So I'm just saying is, like, let them ride up the year, and then if it's... That's not how football works. That's not how football works. I know how, because they want to blame it on somebody and try and get a bounce and try to be like, look over there. I get it, but, like, you know, that's me as a fan who's watched this team for 20 20 fucking years. It's like, let it ride up the season. And then fire him. Okay. So that doesn't happen in football, right? It doesn't happen. Well, so how did that go with Rangnick? When we just Rangnick rode out the season and it was horrible and the players manager. didn't play. We brought in Rangnick in what? November? November? And the players didn't play for him all the way through May. Did that go well? No, it was horrible. It was the worst football we've ever seen. The players didn't give a shit because they knew that he didn't have any real teeth. He wasn't the real manager. He wasn't a manager. So you got to fire the manager, bring in another one, right? Who someone who has control. That's the only, uh, and give him all the control again, and let him spend four hundred no. million on. Uh, so first if, of all, this whole situation is stupid because it's like Ratcliffe comes in, he's going to fire Ten Hag. That's just already a given. I just don't know why it's such a controversial thing to say. It's not like my point of view. It's like he's going to come in with Enios. Enios is going to say, "All right, this is fucked." And they're going to fire Arnold, they're going to fire Murtaugh, they're going to fire Ten Hag, and they're going to put in a whole new team. That's what's going to happen. So I actually think that's going to give Ten Hag more time in this role is because they're going to defer all these decisions until Ratcliffe comes in. And ultimately, the decision is whenever you are at a company and it gets acquired and a new guy's running things, you're gone. And guess what? If it's going well, they'll give you some time. If it's going very bad, you don't have time. Right. So... Regardless of what I think, everyone's to blame. But the idea of like blaming everyone except Ten Hag's not right. I'm not blaming everyone. It's you have to say the tactics are bad. The purchasers were horrid. The team is bad. It's it's festered. The players are bluffers. The Glazers are the worst. And Arnold and Murtar are incompetent. Everyone to blame at Manchester United. But when Ratcliffe comes in, he's cleaning the house. And you know the only people who aren't going, the Glazers. The real problem at Manchester United. So. That's just going to be the story, and I hope that Ten Hag can find a bit of magic. But to me, it looks like the bluffers on the pitch have given up on him. Like they have the previous what four managers at this point. If you talk about who's in that squad, he'll dude. You got a clean house, but he's earned a year in my book. You know he won't get a year. But those other fucking guys, they never should have gotten the job in the first place. LVG clearly didn't win a year when he won the FA Cup. You know, finished I don't sixth, understand. He finished sixth place. Right. And obviously that doesn't matter because Ole Fish in second place and then bottled the final of the Europa League and he got fired four months later. So it's like this is football. It's a cruel game. I get it. Eric Ten Hag, he's going to get all the blame. He's going to get 90 percent of the blame. He's probably 40 percent culpable. Right. Split up the fucking pie. But at the end of the day, the manager gets the hook. And there we go. We're going to write a 15 million dollar check to pay him out through 25. 
and this season will be another fucking wash. It's uh, getting close to being a wash, sir. It is a wash. Like, it's already a wash. <laughs> and if you're listening to this, you're the real MVP because, man, this has been a rough ride. For all Manchester United fans, we feel the, the look, the, the frustration is palpable. You know, another manager, another $400 million, another bunch of shit players, these crap owners, the sale process that petered out to nothing. <laughs> nothing. This has been, and then the horrid football. It's just it's brutal all the way around. We feel it. I mean, I watch every single game. We we love this we, team. We go travel to England to watch this team every year. We watch the Rangnick Crystal Palace loss at the final game of the season, sir. And we're like, is that the low? Then last year, a little hope and then down again. It's rough all around. So shout out to everyone who's supporting this pod. If you like the American Red Devils, sir, we're four fans by fans. You want to go the extra mile? Check out our Patreon page, patreon.com slash American Red Devils. If you want to sign up to be the upper tier, upper crust of MVPs, we don't have any sponsors, 100% fan backed. Please check it out. Also, check out our americadevils.store. We have Eric Ten Hogs, Red Army Scarfs. <laughs> they're in Alex's garage. Get them while they're hot. Get them while he's on the hot seat. I am hot. EF, Code <laughs> EFL Cup. Now that <laughs> we're out. Now that we're out. Get that promo out of here, bro. We should be like, I'm going to change the code to like, like hot bluffer or something. <laughs> Uh, either way, grab a scarf, support the pod, grab a shirt, hoodie, beanie, etc. It goes a long way. Also, check out americadevils.com, sir, and tell them about how to drop reviews, like, subscribe, etc. Great way to help us get found. A great way to support the pod without any money spent on your part is write five-star reviews wherever you listen, but ideally on iTunes or Spotify. And even better, we're giving away free merch. Write a review, a five-star review. Like I said, iTunes, Spotify. Uh, send a screenshot of that review to americadolls at gmail.com with your mailing address, and I'll personally pick, pack, and ship a free Eric Ten Hog Red Army scarf. Send it right to your door anywhere in the world. I'll tell you what, they're going to go quick. So get them while they last. Here's a great review from Nate. It's a great scarf for the record. Sir, yeah, you know what? And uh, all you have to do to get one is write a five star review. Hey, and we send didn't make Eric Ten Hog scarves thinking that this year we go to shit. Yeah, record. you bought yeah. Mason Mount's yeah. kit, and then you <laughs> did like let's do an Eric Ten Hog kit. Did. Yeah, you did. You cursed them. American Red Devils always looking forward to listening to these guys after the game. Great podcast. A plus. Glazers out. A plus. Not on the pitch. Let's get into it. All right, Manchester United nil, Newcastle three. The B team out there for Newcastle, absolutely just stomping on our throat at Old Trafford. Let's get into that eleven. Alex doesn't really like Dutchman, but man, he looks loves like the B Eric team from United. I mean, it looks like the B team from United, doesn't uh, it? Yeah, the B, Tony definitely Martial, the B, Mount, ba- definitely Mejbury, the definitely the Magoo. B backline. Onana uh, in net, Delo, Lindelof, Maguire, Region, Medjbury, Casemiro, Mount, Garnacho, Martial, and Anthony. Sir, how are you feeling about 11? A lot of rotation. Like I said, it looks like our B team. Um, got to be got to be good enough to play better than we played today. So, you know, had some question marks. Where's Bruno? Good to see Casemiro back, even though he's already out injured again. So, fuck us. We're, we're screwed. Um, and I was happy to see my boy AWB on the bench. But what do you think, sir? Look, I think uh, this back line, I think it picked itself. Look, Medjbri, I, I don't know. We're dying for a win. You need to turn it around. I felt like this was an opportunity. For me, it was a little... People people were calling for rotation. I think you got to have Rashford. I think you got to have Bruno. Um, you got to have Hoyland. You need a win. I, I mean, like, the Sharks smell blood in the water. I, I kind of felt like this was like a little bit of a, a soft 11 going into this, like, must-win game. And knowing that Newcastle played the B team, it was kind of a gift to you. Uh, but look, first half, Newcastle came out. They were the better side. United were getting muscled off the ball, just not having that edge at home. It wasn't the worst start to a game that we've seen this season, but it didn't take long for Newcastle to crack the game open. And takes on and beats Mount. Gordon to his right. Almiron arriving here. And Miguel Almiron has scored for Newcastle. Slap bang in front of the stretch for the end. I mean, it's just not even, uh, you know, not even serious uh, play here. Uh, Delo, uh, you know, Garnacho. give that guy a new deal. Oh, wait, we did. Unbelievable. Uh, I question that one. Talk about the goal. I mean, yeah. Garnacho, bad giveaway, doesn't track back. 
They get caught open. Mount could do better. Mount could do much better. And most importantly, but Delo, Delo is bro. The he's jogging. The guy's right there. You see him running. And it's like, we gave him a new contract, bro. It's just, I don't need to give you the were, resume on Delo, you know? I give you the whole thing. No, we reward mediocrity this club. How, no, how, it's how, not that. He celebrated against us when he was at AC Milan. Then he came good. back. He left enough. early with Ronaldo and the crew. Remember that one? He bounced early from the, the preseason game. Not a good look. There's plenty of Delos in the squad. Then Ronaldo Martial, gets bro. the bounce. He's all on the socials with Ronaldo. You know, he's not a real guy at, at United. Delo. Yeah, we're stuck with him for another five years. So exactly. Lucky but, us. That's the point. That's absolutely the point. Why is sir? Tony Martial still cheat, playing? Baby. He can't even fucking run, bro. This good game, hand cheat. He was baby. the worst player on the pitch. He was a business. Good and cheat. He just jogged around like me with my bum knee, bro. It's like I never seen a striker performance like that. I'll tell you what. It used to be good and cheap. Now it's bad and cheap. Bad and cheap. No, it's actually bad and expensive. <laughs> He's not two fifty a fucking week, no, no, no. bro. Delo is bad and cheap. Is because he, he you'd have to pay the upfront. I mean, like there's twenty million, but there's you nothing. Know, uh, Seventy million for Hoyland. That's that's expensive and all right. He's gonna be fine. Uh, it's Anthony at eighty five. <laughs> yeah, but it's you don't spend down at sixty. It's seventy million ain't get me Casemiro goals in three at years. Seventy. Who's by the like, way, seventy million ain't goal get goals in three years for the record. Just that that's the difference. You pay that money, you need goals. Like Sancho, yeah. Uh, goals and goals. 30-second minute, great ball in from Delo, but Martial whiffs on the <laughs> header. This one was, like, hysterical. That was the game in a day. In, like, one play, that, like, nice ball in, finally plays a football, and Martial just, like, I'm not jumping, bro. All right, here we go. 36-minute. Uh, Hall. Oh, it's two. What a bad And Lewis hitting. Hall sprints away. Enjoy a celebration. So this guy, Lewis Hall, for the record, you know, scores his banger, and he's like the backup. Uh, Was he the backup uh, left back? And he just completely pocketed Anthony. Eighty million Anthony getting pocketed by the B left back of Newcastle is everything you need to know. And we're gonna like, just kill shut it. him down. We're gonna kill everybody today. Everybody, nobody's getting a reprieve. Um, Anthony. Was so horrible. He just all he all he could do. He's so left footed. He only I've never seen a player that one footed since Gabriel. No, since Antonio Valencia, unfortunately. But at least Valencia on his right foot was lights out and worked oh, hard. He got better. He got and better. was cheap. You know, he's always on right foot. Um, Anthony offers nothing, bro. And all he does is try and shoot that that curler, bro. That that magic's gone, dude. Everybody knows you're going there, and you've never even hit the target. Like in recent memory, so you got to just give it up. But it's like what the Anthony one is the backbreaker for me. Because that's the one where Eric Ten Hag was like, "This is the guy." Like that's the signing of all the sign. It's like it's the it's the Harry Maguire for Ole. Ha- Ole couldn't get out uh, from under Harry Maguire, and Eric Ten Hag can't get out from under Anthony because it's his guy. He told him to get him, and he but remember is how we pour it. Why did we pay double for him? We could have got him for forty. No, I, I, I just if I'm I agree. We I know I know that, but my point is, he thought he would be good. We lost the first two games this season, and then we paid double because and they it was definitely August. didn't go to Eric Ten Hag and be like, "Is he worth paying more for?" And he did definitely didn't say. They yes. reacted and overpaid for Casemiro and Anthony late in the I window. I give him a pass on Cass. I give Eric Ten Eric Ten Hag gets a pass on Cass because it's not his guy. Frankie De Young, if he came in and he was no good, that's his no, guy. That's fair. But Anthony is his. We could have got him for forty. Coached him, and he was like, "This guy's gonna be a hit." That and that to me says everything you need to know. That that that's the one. It's just like when Ole was like, "Bet it on, bet the farm on Magoo, dude." And it he's sh- my captain. And it goes. Da- you go down with the ship, right? There you go. There <laughs> we are. Down. Magoo's still playing, bro. How do you look today? Forty seventh minute. Mount smacks it from way out. Toothless. United grasping at straws. But look, our first shot on net here. That's good from Mason Mount. Number one Mason Mount fan. Also probably overpaid for him as well at the manager's behest, sir. Second half, United start out much better. AWB came in and cast uh, AWB. And I'm, 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 I'm Robot, Robot sorry. came in for Casemiro and Delo. Again, we need two goals. We're bringing on defenders. That is something that I'm going to have to call out. Where's Hoyland? Where's Rashford? Where's Bruno? It's, we're down two. You got to go for it. It's a cup. You lose, you're eliminated. So uh, this, I didn't necessarily like this change. I don't hate on Robot or AWB, but you know, why not go for it with attacking subs? I mean, Delo was dreadful, um, and Casemiro got hurt. I do agree. You could have thrown the whole kitchen sink at this point, given how poorly we played in the first half, and those subs came late. So we should have. Martial had to. I was shocked Martial showed up in the second half, bro, because he was basically just walking around offering nothing. How are you going to press the front? It does seem a little like 
something's off. Right? Everything's off. Something. Everything we touch turns to shit. All right, sixtieth minute. Allowed to run a long way and score what should be the decisive goal. Which will lead to plenty more awkward questions. I mean, this is just brutal. I mean, th that that is just, that goal was absolutely just horrid. Like, you know, backbreaker. Play the manager all you want, but bro, yeah. like the defending is abysmal. Like everyone just steps back, steps back. He plots it and they score three goal off one XG. Dude, the team is just... The manager is a mess, they're but the players are him. bluffers, He's bro. He's the coach. Sure, but they're throwing them under the bus, bro, because they're I've lazy never, and they shouldn't I've be there. I've never heard of a coach who just, like, the team is playing horrible. He is coaching the team, and everyone's like, it's not as, like, the coach has something to do yes, with it. Yes, he has culpability, but to blame it all on Eric Ten Hag is delusional, bro. You can't get rid of the full roster of players. You, you talked about that last pod. We should clear house. We have to. Yes, but it can, but, like... At the end of the day, you ultimately can't because of the wages everybody's on. So there's like, so you have a billion invested in the players, right? Who can you get rid of? You can't get rid of the players. It's just, look here, Bruno, Rashford, and Hoyland come on for Martial, Garnacho, and Hannibal. This was late, in my opinion. Bruno had a great chance in the 70th force. Longstaff almost made it four. United don't even try. Look, I mean, this is just, uh, to me... It's like when you date a chick, sir. Like that game's over, we lose three nothing. It's like when you date a girl. It, you know, life happens. Time is linear, right? It goes in a straight line. You can't undo Anthony. You can't undo the start to the season. And it's like you might be dating a chick. It's going great, and then you have a few too many. You end up like booting or something. You can't erase. <laughs> you know, you, you just bottle it. Tell me know? about tell me about your love life. What, what you? <laughs> what no, that's what I was describing <laughs> you. But uh, <laughs> like, you know, but you know what I'm saying? Like, like. A manager is like Dayton. Like they come into the team, you like overperform, then you then you kind of look like a like a it, the start, how it builds, it all matters. It, it's gone south, and it's just it's hard to get back, you know, because the players are over it. He's not the players aren't playing for him. It's clear as day. I they don't want to be there. It's all gone bad. It's like a bad relationship. You're looking at a bad relationship on the outside. You ever have a buddy dating a chick and you're just like, that's not going to end well, but it goes on. It keeps let, going. Let me let me you know? close this analogy. Guy goes through woman after woman after woman, meets great girls, brings them in, you know, take, introduces them to his mom, goes on vacation. And every time your buddy, he has these great girls around and he just keeps fucking it up. Moise ain't great. LVG okay, ain't great. I, hold Radio on, hold great. on a second, that, bro. That, that, that hold just on. doesn't hold make on. any sense. They're, they're, they're girls with merit. That's all I'm saying. The great this guy's not great. Jose wasn't great. Okay, well, we hired all these fucking people, so they gave him a chance. All I'm saying is, like, maybe we have to look ourselves in the fucking mirror and be like, what is wrong with us? Like, Eric Ten Hag is not some bum that we found off the street, right? He had a CV. Other clubs were out for him. He had a good season last year, and now everything is falling apart. Maybe. Yes, he has to blame. The, the transfers have not gone off well. I just don't even know what you're saying. I, it's mashed I'm potatoes. Is like maybe we it's should mashed look, potatoes. No. It's absolutely mashed potatoes. Uh, pro, get fuck off. Like, I'm just saying, is like maybe we should look ourselves in the mirror, and it's not just the manager. It's not just the new girl. It's the guy. It's the guy. The guy so is the club. everything other than... That is not him. what I said. I just said, like, he is to blame, but he is not solely to blame. He is also the players who have, you know, thrown him under the bus, the fucking front office who are just like abdicated their own job and let him do it because they have no competency they in doing it. They bought a lot of the people he wanted and they spent a lot of money. You so can't they hide overspent, from that. bro. They overspent. No competent DOF would sanction an $85 million signing of Anthony. Think so, about that. So the, okay, so every mistake that he has made, there's supposed to be said. this magical person who prevents that mistake from being made. So no mistake that Eric Ten Hag makes counts. Does any real so players don't club play, so, have a DOF? Uh, not sorry. have a DOF? I'm, I'm just talking here. So if the players play horribly and the lineup is bad and the tactics are bad and they don't, <laughs> they don't execute, it's all the players. And then if he buys a player and they don't turn up good, it's all the director of football's fault because they should have stopped him from signing that player because they should have known and predicted the future that would have gone bad. Or maybe it's the same thing that's happened every single time, which is that we bring in a manager, we give him a ton of money, and they didn't do a good job. And every single manager who's come in who's had the responsibility of purchasing players and managing the team 
it's gone bad, and that's just a, what that's just the way it is. So LVG they're all did bad a bad managers. job. They're all bad managers. Is what you're saying? LVG bought bad, and the he bought sti- worse. He bought worse than Eric LVG. Did but here's the deal: LVG bought bad, and he played bad. Mourinho, His games were terrible. Right, I would argue Mourinho wasn't backed because the, the club was in a sticky he situation. Pogba, Lukaku. Uh, that's a lot of money. No, of course, but he Mourinho was. Mourinho was you have to buy a lot of players now. The club did half of the work and didn't do the complete work. Then Ole came in. They backed Ole to the tune of 400 something mil. And Ole bought bad. And Eric Ten Hag was back to the tune of 400 mil. He bought bad. And it's gone south. You have to say it's gone. It, like the situation is, is becoming untenable. And that's related to the mix of characters in the locker room. That's related to his coaching style and the players reacting to it. Now, the players could be bluffers. That's absolutely true. But it's on. He's the one at the helm running the team right now. And it's not going great. Anthony, for the money, with the scandal, getting leaving. It's just it's all a mess. Sancho falling out. The whole thing is just there's too much going on right now. And it's just like clearly it doesn't translate on the pitch. It's going negative on the pitch. And like what I was trying to say is there's a lot of people to blame and sometimes things don't work out. Like with there's there's good uh you could date. So you could and under other circumstances things could go well. It just doesn't go well. And and that's just it. It's not like anyone's fault. It's not like he's a bad guy. It's not like he's a bad coach. It just didn't go well for United. You know, for whatever reason they overpaid for Anthony. Like you said could have not overpaid, but they did. And other things kind of went the other way and went south. And it just kind of turned into this shit pie that we're watching week in, week out. And it's a shit fucking pie. Nobody wanted it to be, but it is. And I can see it. It's like the thousand yard stare, the yoked up other ball guy next to him. and doesn't look like he has a clue. The body language on everyone, whether it's the players or even him on the touchline, doesn't look like he wants to be there, dude. It, I, it has this vibe, it has a bad vibe all around. And it sucks that we've gotten to this place. Nobody when shit goes south and it's this bad, wants it to be in this place. Yeah, but life is not black and white, bro. It is shades of gray. So, yes, he is to blame, but he's not the only one to blame. And no football club is run the way Manchester United is. No top football club like Liverpool, City, fucking Barcelona, Real Madrid, whatever you want to choose. They're not run this way where you just say, here, go for it. You're in charge of everything. He is fucked up. But he shouldn't be in a position to make that many fucking mistakes because he shouldn't be making that many decisions around who we buy, how much we pay, what's the backstop. And there's a reason we just keep shitting through managers every two years, bro. It's the club. The club is fucked. So he's going to get fired, which is the only thing you could do. Right? You can't just fire everyone on the squad because you have wages, but you could just fire the one manager, pay him $15 million, and then move on to the next one. But like that will fix nothing. The rot is is systemic it is in every facet of of manchester united the roof is leaking the owners don't give a fuck the front office are completely incompetent the players are overpaid lazy and they shouldn't most of them shouldn't be there and the manager has lost he's lost the plot he's lost he's out of his depth because this is a shit show and it's a mess and nobody can clean it up all right match reactions manchester united shots 13 to newcastle's 10 two to their five on target 62% 62% of the ball to their 38%. But what do we know, sir? Let's check in with the manager. Uh, Simon. Uh, what went wrong tonight and how did you get things back on track? Because things aren't going very well. No, all right. Everyone I've seen. It's um, below the standards you can expect uh, with Manchester United. This is um, not good enough by far. And we have to put the things right. I take the responsibility for it. Uh, it's my team, and they are not performing. So, um, but yeah, I I have to share it with my my place. But yeah, I'm responsible, as I say. Do you think having worked with some of these players that quite a few of them just aren't good enough? As a team, uh, uh, we are we are not good enough, and whatever the reasons are, um, there's no no space for for excuses. Uh, we have to do things better and that uh, then we have to raise our standards because uh, otherwise you never get the right levels and you never get the performance and you never get the results. It seems like some- All right, look, Eric Ten Hockey says he's responsible. There you go, sir. 100% for the, the level of the players. He's taking the blame. He's not 100% responsible, but that's what a manager does. Well, he says he is. 
Yeah. Sir. Well, do you say everything you say? Is that like come I on. say? He's, he's resp- he said he's resp- he said he's responsible. What, 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 <laughs> what are you looking for? Are you looking like, 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 like trolling me now? No, like, say, you say he's not responsible. He I did not he's say he's not responsible. <laughs> I just said, I'm, said, sir, do you understand nuance? Do you understand <laughs> like do. gradients? Do you understand that six different things can be true at the same fucking time? And it's not just like, yes, no, one, zero. It's like, yes, he's responsible, but he's not solely responsible. That's all I was saying. <laughs> I, hard to keep track. Okay, bro. But, <laughs> but sir, we got a next match. That's full of versus Manchester United and Craven Cottage. Oh, my God. Here we go. Saturday, November 4th. I think the pod is like, we're, 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 we're shaky, bro. We're going to crash before we hit 500 episodes here. We're so close. Saturday, November 4th, 5.30 a.m. Pacific, 8.30 a.m. <laughs> Eastern. Look, for all those who don't know, I've known Alex since we were, what, uh, 15 years old for more than 20 years. So I wouldn't be comfortable giving him this much gruff, but this guy loves this team so much that, you know, you, sir, you wear it on your sleeve and you know, sometimes I like to poke the bear a little bit. You're poking that fucking bear. <laughs> I know the bear is getting, I know. I'm about to play the whinge in comment. I you swear really to fucking God, you do that. I'm going to rip your fucking soundboard <laughs> off and hit you in the face with it. Like, <laughs> Woo! I'll New, tell you what, New Jersey, day, baby, daylight savings go. time is a week delayed in America. So it could be worse. We could be waking up at 4 30 AM to watch Manchester United lose to Fulham, and instead we get to wake up at five twenty, extra hour of sleep. Daylight savings is a day later. Lucky us. I'm just glass half full. No, I, I, I look, I, I get it, and look, <laughs> and, and I think what we're a lot of what we've seen on the internet and on the Discord is just disagreement on the manager, right? And I'm trying to provide the counterbalance for there is no place for him to hide, and people are, you know. But he shouldn't spend the money and he shouldn't do this and we shouldn't fire another manager. We shouldn't do this. And like, I think that's fair as well. Like, and, and you know what? Disagreement's good. But like I said at the beginning of the pod, Ratcliffe's coming in clean in house. And he's especially clean in house if we look like this. Like, it just, if we look this shit, if we don't show up, like, oh, he's gonna want a are fresh we start, right? It's like, are we showing up at full? I don't know. Probably, Probably not. not. Probably not. They're not good. Is Delo going to start? Oh, oh Abe WB's right. back. Oh, we got Magoo. Jesus like it, It's like, this is just shit. This is just like when you and me flew to England to watch Crystal Palace under Ralph Rangnick, and it was absolute crap, and we lost, and nobody cared. And it was just like that And all in we October. did in the away stand was root against Liverpool to win the league. That's where we're at. And it's November. So if people are happy with that at this football club, I'm not happy with that at this football club. And I think that something's gone wrong behind the scenes. And none of us know what the deal is. Absolutely none of us know what's actually going on. And unfortunately for me, it's the players. I think it's the players 100%. And I think Ten Hag has a thousand yard stare because he knows he's done and he knows he doesn't want to be here. <laughs> and he knows there's a $14 million check if he gets gone and he'd probably rather be out. That's what, If you want to know the real honest truth, that's what it looks like to me. If I may? Yeah, go for it. Many managers in this point, I agree with you, but what have managers done in the past? They would start shitting on Manchester United and forcing their hand. That is what Jose Mourinho did. Writing was on the wall. He started talking shit. Not a big club. Not a European football club. Ole was dead man walking as well. But like he did, he's not throwing himself under the bus like the way some of these ex-managers have when they want that payout. So like I, you know, but you know how it. He's like, gonna, they're gonna give him enough rope. Line, they're giving him enough rope to hang himself, bro. He's like he's fucked because, like you said, they gave him so much power and he signed all these players, spent all this money, and most haven't worked out. He's gonna do the. There's only one guy with his head under the guillotine, and it's Eric Ten Hag. Everyone wants it to work out and for him to be the guy for the next twenty years and for him to compete what? with Pep and Klopp and 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 be the new titan of Manchester. But like, you know. And it's just that it is what it, 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 it wouldn't look as bad if he didn't have his Dutch numpty buddy sitting next to him looking just I thought that guy like, was smart. I was that like, guy what? looks like he got no idea. Like that, that's why I think he's going. You know, that's why I think he's out. That it's guy, that guy looks like he's way too yoked to be like actually working on tactics. You know he what I mean? Seem like he's doing anything. I thought he was like really he literally smart. Looks like just as close to him talking to him in Dutch, and it's it's like when Ole looked at the iPad. I know. It's the same vibe. I know. It's the same vibe God, we're when we so were losing. <laughs> we, we were losing, and then Ole and the whole crew on the sideline were like <laughs> looking at the iPad, and they were like really like maybe we can figure out why we're so fucked. And then uh, it's just like the two Dutch guys sitting there, be like you know talking Dutch. <laughs> And they're just like, they know they're fucked. They're watching this game. We're getting scored two goals. They're like, we're fucked. And it's just like, that's it. That like it's the same vibes. The same again, exact vibes. Again, same movie again, bro. 
and you know how it ends and it's like it's not right and it's not like it's not right and we're our cl- here's the deal our club's fucked yeah it's absolutely fucked our only hope is Ratcliffe comes in and somehow adds a fresh you know set up in the footballing operations and we could have some semblance of a world class uh, director of football, etc., and just like clean house. Everyone who's ever scouted a player, you're gone. Everyone, like front office, you're gone. All the way down to probably Eric Ten Hag, the trainers, every single person, every position has to be reevaluated. And that's what he would do. And that's what it's going to take. So it's a longer term thing. And so it's not this Eric Ten Hag has to stay or not. It's like Ratcliffe has to actually have say in restructuring the org. And unfortunately, Eric Ten Hag will be a casualty of. Yeah, that's true. Mining out the bluffers in this team over the long term. That is what will happen if we're successful. If we were to be successful, that's what it's going to take. Sir, the whole thing's got to go. You got to burn it all down. And you know what? Who? Some people will survive. And in three years, Hoyland might be scoring 20 EPL goals. You never know. But right now, this team, this combination of, of bluffers is fucked. And it's a good, it's, this is Rangnick 2.0. And I, it's like that was the hardest time that you and me have been through as a United as United fans because doing the pod and watching that where there was like no hope week in, week out was just brutal. And we're about to head to Europa League. I mean, we've been spoiled as Manchester United fans, which is why we're going to have such a rough next decade, I would guess. You know, football goes in cycles. We've seen that before. You saw that with Busby and then the drought and then Fergie and then all the success. And now we're in that, bro. We're like in the 70s, the equivalency. Um, and we're free falling. So the club's a mess. I agree. The only hope we have is if Ratcliffe, or most likely, bro, is like 10 years later, the other fucking guy, hopefully some tech billionaire buys Manchester United from Ratcliffe and the Glazers. Because, like, you know, if you read the history books, it would assume that Ratcliffe would also fuck it up. You know, we'd li- we'd suck some more for another decade. Then some guy would finally come on five years later. Maybe we'd be good again. Um, but I'm hoping it's Ratcliffe, and I'm hoping... He's learned from his experiment at Nice, and he brings in really good people, and he guts house, like you said, and Eric Ten Hag will likely be a casualty for that, but I would gut the front office, give him to the end of the year, but that probably won't happen because, as you said, sir, football, like you got to blame someone. He's the easiest guy to blame, and hopefully... Uh, yeah, but once you lose the locker room and the players don't want to play for you, it's like they don't play for having nobody, him stay isn't, isn't going to help. You know what I mean? Like, like there's no effort. We're losing and there's no concern. Who are you bringing though? Uh, just as a I don't know. I'm just saying somebody. I, looked, I think it's I McLaren. The list. It's like Frank L- McLaren. No, he's, so he's gonna be interim. He's gonna be interim. You no, know. it's gonna be Darren Fletcher, bro. They'll, I'm telling you, Darren Fletcher's been licking his lips for the opportunity to be the, the coach for this club. Yep. Well, let's hope that it's not against Fulham. <laughs> Lifetime versus Fulham. We've won 55. We've drawn 20. We've lost 14. First time we played them, we drew 2-2 in the FA Cup. 1905. We've won four. Drawn one the last five. So losing to Fulham. Like, we're going to beat Fulham. You heard it here. Fulham coming in. Did you say we're going to beat Newcastle? Or you said we're going to lose? I said we're going to lose. There you go. I, I was dumb enough to say we're But I didn't, know it was the B, I didn't know it was the B team. I thought Eddie Howe would actually show up uh, because of the EFL right. final, how they lost. And he played the B team and they dusted us. And the fact that, like, people are okay with that is just like. I don't think anyone's okay with that. Uh, we're kind of used to it. We're kind of like, all right. Like, there's we're not, not okay like a big with it, outrage. We're not surprised. Thing. It's I think just like people are pretty fucking pissed, bro. I mean, you go to our Discord, people are pretty upset. You go to Twitter, people are pretty upset. People are basically saying the people are used to no, it. No, but like it, you said we've got. I think people were upset like maybe ten games ago. Now they're just like, I'm good watching this team. Like the most common thing I heard was like, I'm taking a break. Like I'm stop watching. I mean, obviously we're not. But, like, <laughs> we it's don't literally get like, <laughs> it's literally like, I'm out. This is just miserable. And at that level, you're. You know, you're <laughs> you're you're hurting pretty bad. Uh, as far as Fulham goes, sir, they play the four two three one. Uh, it will be they got William uh, Jimenez up top. Paulinha, that midfielder we discussed last season, we thought we might want to buy Anton Robinson from the U.S. Men's National Team. Uh, some good players on Fulham, so it's not going to be an easy game. Also away, our form has suffered. We have trouble scoring goals. Everybody knows that. Uh, physio room, Martin is out. Malasia, Shaw, AWB bounced back. Casemiro is now he's off injured first half. Sancho's in timeout. And then Ahmad, longer term injury, sir. 
Given those injuries, what is your starting 11? Uh, I'm not in net. Uh, AWB. I don't know if Veron's going to make it. I don't know what's going on with Veron, but Veron Magoo, Regayon, um, Erickson Mount, Bruno, Garnacho on the left, Toiland up front, Rashford on the right. Maybe they'll switch Rashford on the left, Garnacho on the right. Who you got? Yeah, I guess uh, Onana, Delo, McGuire, Lindelof, Regayon. You got to go with Amrabat, Mount, Bruno. I'm going to say Rashford, Hoyland, and Anthony. Oh. I think he. he He's the he's the manager's boy, sir. He played him so much, uh, you know, like Sancho got fired up at him, right? Isn't that how it went? I'm not sure <laughs> who's taking the blame on Sancho. <laughs> da -da -da -da. Another Ole. Well, we got the odds. Another Ole hitter. Full of the, uh, the underdogs, plus 260. Easy money there. Uh, more likely to draw. Plus 250. And United, the favorites, plus 105. Given the odds, sir, what is your score prediction? Uh, I got us beating Fulham 2-0. I think this is going to be... You know, I, I we're on a slide. I still think we're good enough to be Fulham. If we're not, you know, then it's really sort of uh, red alarms flashing. Um, again, like I said, Ten Hag, his job is safe until Ratcliffe completes the deal and he starts getting his arms around things. And if we're playing this bad, you know, we're just going to be like zombie walking until Ratcliffe comes in and then he'll he'll make the call. It's going to be 100% Jim Ratcliffe's call. Um, and the fixtures coming up are going to be the ones that determine it. It's going to be the Liverpool's, the Newcastle ways uh, that those games are going to be the ones that determine that his job right now is going to be like draw win against Luton, you know, we'll be all right up and down Europa league. And then it'll be like, boom, Anfield away, big loss, something like that. That will be when the actual um, heat is on. There's your prediction. I'm calling one nil Fulham. I think we lose this game. I think we're just in full meltdown mode. The players have given up. Really? You think it's that bad? Yeah. And you want him to stick around for the rest of the year? If it's that bad, you can't be Fulham away. Like I, I, sir. You know, what are we gonna do, bro? We're gonna lose every game the rest. of If you lose Fulham away, sir, you know, let's get in the news. Like, what are you talking? I'm just saying. I think we're gonna lose, and I'm saying they're gonna fire him, bro. But like, that's what's gonna happen. Lose to Fulham away. Hi, yeah, yeah. That's we are good enough to beat fucking Newcastle. We're good enough to beat half the teams we've lost to this season. Like, why wouldn't we lose to Fulham away? We're not good away. We're not good anywhere. Makes sense. All right. United in the news. Manchester United players fear Eric Ten Hag's hardline approach is affecting team morale with stars feeling that internal conflicts are damaging squad unity amid dismal start to the season, sir. The bluffers are leaking. You're putting it here in the news. What do you say? I mean, we've seen this story, what, four times in the last six years? It's like, they always do this. He's too hard. We don't like his tactics. That's what they said about Ole. They don't. They think he's too hard line. That's exactly what they said about Ralph Rangnick. And here we are. Once again, we got a little bit of this. At the beginning of last year, when things weren't going well with Ronaldo, you know, he was feeding shit um, to whoever would listen. And I know the same thing's happening now. This could be made up because we're playing so poorly, but I doubt it. Bluffers are bluffers at the end of the day. So I imagine they're leaking to their boys of the Daily Mail. And there you go. Yeah, no, I have a feeling it's more of the he's a harder coach. You know, we came in, Ole, Rangnick didn't have a lot of discipline. Ten Hag has tons of discipline. That, la that Discipline's all nice and good when you're winning. If you have a lot of discipline and you're losing, no matter what sport it is, NFL, anything, you, you know, the players fall out pretty quick. So, you know, I think that just basically a tough start, bad form, and then the players just don't want to deal with all of his, uh, you know, intensity, right? I, I, that, that, that seems to be what it is. These are a bunch of soft, wet noodle bluffing players, and that's kind of what we've known and what we expect to get, and they're leaking as they have in the past, sir. Uh, this is pretty hysterical. The jerseys, <laughs> the Adidas kits oh, are too tight, sir. You want to talk about this one? Sorry, or, yeah. Uh, you know, it's never a dull moment. Like I said last pot, I thought that was good. You never, you never go hungry talking shit as a pundit about Manchester United. I guess the kits are too tight. I, why don't they just do a size up? I didn't really understand this. They're apparently playing with the replicas. You know what the average schlub fan like myself would buy if they were buying a kit. You know versus the authentic ones, which are like twice the price because um, they're too tight. And let alone how they look, but <laughs> I don't. Are they are they making shit up at this point? Because can't you just play a size larger? Like if you're a small, I don't, don't wear a medium. If you're a medium, wear a large. Like I, I don't really get this, but 
This is the new. This is what's been happening, sir. You know, it's all negative at the moment. Uh, look, should never left Nike. You know our opinion here. We're Nike. We're Nike fans on the podcast. And uh, next bit of news here: Marcus Rashford parties the night after United's Derby defeat. Uh, he was with friends in a private area at the China White in Central Manchester. Ever been there? He reported uh, for training on Monday. It was his birthday. I think his birthday was on Monday. He went out the night before after the Derby defeat. Sir, what do you got to say about this one? I mean, I get it. The guys are they're humans. I, I think it's a little inappropriate between two games to be going to a club. I mean, I'm sure he was. Actually, I don't know if he wasn't drinking. Bottle full of bub. It feels like a bad idea. Like, I think you go to a dinner, like, quiet, you know, go to Juan Mata's Spanish restaurant in Manchester, for example. Like, I I wouldn't be pictured at a nightclub. Who was that? Was that uh, McGuire? McGuire. It, just, it has. It just doesn't feel like we're a serious club, bro. And that feels like I like I really like Marcus Rashford, but that doesn't feel like a serious move when you fucking get the shit kicked out of you by City and he didn't play very well. Well, here's the deal. This is, you know, we are who we are, right? This is our record. This is it. So, yeah, if Rashford's partying after we beat City, does anyone care? No. Well, you won. If we are losing and uh, the team is horrible and you're going out, it just looks bad. And you're paid, like, insane amount of money. Uh, it's not a good look for me. You know, I, I like I don't like it. I'm not trying to, like, hit, like, you can't celebrate your birthday. <laughs> but I, but I saw this I saw this great clip of uh, Gundogan who went to Barca and I think they lost the uh, they lost to, to Real Madrid. Yeah. And after the press, he said, "We're not angry enough in the locker room," and he was kind of disappointed that they lost this big game and that the collective of the Barcelona team wasn't that upset about it. And everything we've heard about Manchester United is that they don't really care when they lose. Like it was like. I think Ling Rooney came back and Lingard and Pogba are dancing in the locker room to music, but they just lost. And Rooney was kind of like lost the, his mind, apparently. He was like the elder statesman being like, what are you doing that's not right? And I kind of feel like going out and partying after losing a derby in the way we did with our season going the way we are is kind of getting to that you're not it doesn't bother you that we're club. losing. And so, because the elite mentality, if you look at it, you look at a shitty, you look at those players and be like, winning every, like, United used to be that way. Winning every single game was life and death. And it's not anymore. And it clearly isn't. And they don't even care about today. And that's why we're so far away from it. But just like a little window into the mentality. And why don't they care? Because they get rewarded with new contracts. I'm not picking on Rashford because he arguably deserved that new contract after last year. But, like, why is Delo still here? Why is Martial our starting striker effectively, right? At the end of the day, he has the most goals over Hoyland. Um, and he it should be nowhere near the squad. But it's like we, re we reward mediocrity again and again and have no standards. And that's what you get out of it. At football, man, quote, if Ted Hag doesn't pl uh, plan on playing IX football and isn't an expert on counterattacking football like we are playing, what is the point of him being here? He's almost gotten all of the players he's wanted. Like the comment if you're going to include in the pod. I'm liking it right now. It's on the <laughs> pod. Uh, what do you make of that whole, like, he's like, we're not playing IX style, but we're signing Anthony. We're signing Onana, who played for him at IX. Or, you know, so it's kind of like counterintuitive. We don't aspire. I don't aspire to be IX. Like, well, the, no passing. Yeah, I, I guess possession based. I mean, he's like, we're gonna define a style based on the players we have in house. I want to play the Manchester United style. I don't want to play the IX style. I want to play exciting football. I want to play attacking football, and I want to play with a never say die attitude. And you're not seeing any of that. So, like, yeah, we're not playing IX style, but we're not playing Manchester United style at least historically. So we don't have a style at the moment. I saw it last year. I'm seeing nothing this year because everything's a fucking mess. We have the same. We have different eleven every game and nobody's playing well there's no continuity and no one's informed so there you go no i that's a that's that's a valid point i just think it's very uh there is no style and it's all over the place so people are saying hey what you you passed it all put it on the ground at ix everything looked good why aren't you playing that way and you know he said we can't uh despite signing players that you would think we would like playing out the back with onana like that was a huge signing i thought we'd see way more of that totally. uh, it's not we're we're not and yeah. it's uh Last year was like, oh, we would play like that if we get rid of De Gea. We did. We got a new keeper, and we're not doing it. It just doesn't make sense to me. Uh, at Espresso United, Serge, you called us a few weeks ago. Cat 5 hurricane <laughs> conditions at the club. That's a great analogy, sir. I'm Ten Hag in, but not because I think he's great. 
I don't think Sir Alex could get any more out of these bluffers. It's depressing stuff. Barricade the windows. <laughs> this is nasty. We like are that. like, cat it's five. approaching. It's a cat five. It's like, Where's the you fall know. of it's a cat five. Uh, at J uh, Galdo 1991, Ronaldo attitude stinks when he's on the field and he acts like a clown when substituted. I'm not saying he was the problem, but he had to go. One of the goats, though, but it was time to move on. Just tired of seeing the sarcastic CRF, CR7 comments. Look, the CR7 trolls are out there and they're a thing. Pay no <laughs> mind. <laughs> they to are them. a are thing. Like, they... How dare you? Like, look, you're not one. I'm not saying you're one. I'm just saying they, there is a. They had we had him with Pogba. I mean, like every time you have a player that has a huge commercial appreciation, and obviously Ronaldo is a different class than Paul Pogba. But I'm just saying, like you get these people that like players more than the club, and that's hard for me to square because I will always choose Manchester United over any player. But dude, the game has changed, bro, and everything. Dude, social media last ten years. Come on. Same uh, tw- uh, same uh, Twitter handle, caretaker Carrick incoming uh, at D underscore Cole. Nothing will caretaker change about the club Carrick. until the Glazers <laughs> leave. There's no player accountability. It's <laughs> pathetic, shambolic, embarrassing. This family is overseeing the complete destruction of one of the world's biggest sporting enterprises within 15 years. It's over, lad. See you in a decade. I will have you uh, remember, like, you know, the New York Yankees giant uh, global sports franchise haven't been in the World Series in a decade. And the same family owns them, the Steinbrenners, obviously, who saw all the success. Um, and, and they're not doing well either and falling over their feet, making the same mistakes. Uh, but, you know, the stadium's still full. Everyone wears the Yankees hat. You go to Europe, it's everywhere. Um, I think Manchester United going the same type of way, where it's almost the how famous United is, is disconnected by the performance on the pitch. Well, that's very well said. <laughs> I mean, why did... Um, What's that fucker's name? Why did Klopp turn down Manchester United in 2014? Because he said they're a commercial club. They're not a football sporting project. And that was obvious then, bro. And it's gotten even worse because the, de- the deviation between performance and reputation has never been wider. At Will Ritter's, sirs, is it even worth watching the matches at this point? Every game seems the same. Something needs to change. Look, I watch every game. Uh... Unfortunately, we, we we have this podcast, so we watch every single game. Uh, <laughs> is it worth watching? You are going to it's going to be like it was like this is Rangnick. We're in the Rangnick phase of it seems to me the players don't want to be there. It seems to me like almost the manager doesn't want to be there. It, it, it seems like the walking dead and something could spark it and wake it up. And maybe you want to watch it and see if that happens. Or maybe you just want to see this Cat 5 hurricane just like do some damage. But either way, it's going to be entertaining. Uh, at Bub C 316, this feels like the Watford away game that finished off Ole rinse and repeat at Football Heritage FC. Uh, at last tweet here, at Dat Greek Dad, hot take being relegated for a season or two is the only way to get rid of the Glazers. With relegation comes massive wave bill cuts to drop the dead weight and start over. Anyone making 200K a week or more has to go. The only person I would keep would be Hoyland, Hannibal, and Garnacho. What do you think? Relegation? We did get relegated, <coughs> if you recall. Yeah, we got relegated in 1972. Um, it's a long way from then. We're not going to get relegated. Um, that's why I don't Ooh. really understand why you wouldn't fire the manager at the end of the season. I keep a couple more players. I keep Martinez, um, but... We do need a full clean of the house, and we said that over and over again. Look, uh, that's it. That's the podcast. If you're here listening to it, you know, it's a tough, these are tough days. We, you know, um, I think we started the pod with Mourinho. It was tough to see him go. Then Ole got taken out to the woodshed. Our that boy Rangnick coming in, fighting hard with those big quotes that That's still cool. are play. And he was right about everything. Uh, you know, we've seen Carrick, Caretaker, Eric Ten Hag came in. Um, and look, I, like I, you know, the blame game is the blame game, but we're here. We're here, babe. You know, we're, we're here (laughs) and, uh, it ain't look good. And I don't know if it's good for both of us to keep this thing going. That's all I got to say. Get the you fuck know? out of here. What are you talking about? I'll what do you never, mean? I, well, <laughs> I'm talking about the Eric Ten Hag might need to break up with Manchester I United. I thought you mean you're, call, you're breaking up with the other pod. No. I, I, I thought you were ending it. No. Speaking I, of breaking up sir, with girlfriends, the, the, this the, guy's that, breaking up with me. Lives no, out the street no, for me. No. <laughs> Move back to Jersey? Sir, Come on. I never give up. You're killing me. No, the pod never sleeps. I'm saying like Eric Ten Hag, how did hey, we get here, babe? He's going to get fired, bro. He's going to get fired. Hey, babe, how did we get here? How did we get here? Who's... 
We should do right now. You know, is who's the next? Like, who's the next man. fucking guy, bro? Who's the next guy? Because they're gonna fire him in the next three months, probably the next six weeks. Who's the next guy? We should just no, but fun. you know, you know, what I know. I, but who's you, the next guy? The, the The relationship analogy is true because it's like you don't want to see it go, but you know it's gotta go. You know, that's kind of how and every manager along the line. Well, uh, babe, other than all, that I knew Ole plan. had to go. I knew yeah, Ole of was like after the zoot suit final where he made his yes, first substitution. Yes, I knew in that. stoppage time. No, in extra time, Mourinho. I felt bad, uh, but no, again, Mourinho, started Mourinho talking made shit, bro. He started I mean, sticking I, a finger in our I'm eye. I'm not to say it. Mourinho made it easy because he was harsh. <laughs> he was harsh on us. He like made fun of us and told us how we. Cool. Need to lose weight all at the end, you know, <laughs> and so, so it, was e- it was easier to kind of break up with him. And then, like, uh, when it came to Ole, it was just like, you know, Ole was the nice She'd guy, the you know, place. you know, and then uh, Eric Ted Hogg's probably like, you know, a little exotic Dutch. You know, you wish it, you wish he had this system in his head that just fixed everything and he could just totally compete with the top tier of English managers and like all this stuff would work out. And then, you know, just didn't, unfortunately, but that's where we are, sir. Give us our top 10 downloads last seven days. Unless you want to more breakup analogies. Uh, I'm good. <laughs> I'm going to break up with this, this episode. Uh, number one, how you doing? How you doing? Los Angeles, California, Chicago, Illinois, New York, New York, San Francisco, California, Melbourne, Australia, Dublin, Ireland, Phoenix, Arizona, Dallas, Texas, Brooklyn, New York, and last but not least, Manchester, England. We appreciate all of you. If you are listening, well, thank you for listening. Because being a fan of this team it ain't easy. Doing this pod, watching every game, re re fucking like re talking about that breakup, bro. I sound like a bunch. Of, we sound like a bunch of sips it's like harsh. talking about that girl it's like so not harsh. texting us back, bro. It's like that's what this feels like. We're taking all the uh, dating analogies. We're both happily it married. It shouldn't be this hard, dude. It, like this hurts. It this hurts is, to watch. The, watching what we're watching is. Painful. I this know. is like if you, you watch it, like it's like it's so ugly. It's so painful, sir. You know, it just. And then we get to talk about it for an hour. I know. How fun is that? And, and he reminds you how much it sucks. It's yeah, like, that's I am aware. I, I usually feel better at the end of the pot. I feel worse. You know, but the bitter ain't so bitter she's, without the she's sweet. Gonna fi- she's gonna fix the it. Sweet ain't so sweet I'm without you. She's gonna fix it. She's gonna turn it she's around. Turn it around. Yeah. She didn't mean it. All right, we'll leave you with this one. We are the Busby boys. Enjoy your week. We got Fulham. Let's go.